On the evening of March 29th, a sudden storm hit Nanchang, Jiangxi province. There has been extreme weather in many parts of China in recent days. Since March 29th, Nanchang, Jiangxi, and Guizhou have experienced thunderstorms, strong winds, and hail. This has led to many trees being snapped, buildings damaged, and even windows of some high-rise buildings being blown out. People sleeping were swept out of windows along with their mattresses, leading to fatalities. Many described it as apocalyptic. According to reports from Chinese media, around 3 a.m. on March 31st, Nanchang experienced short intense rainfall, strong wind, and thunderstorms. Mr. Xu, who lives on the 20th floor in the Weimen Clearwater Bay community in Nanchang, was sleeping with his family at the time. Suddenly, there was a loud noise that woke him up. He quickly got up and found that the windows in his living room and another bedroom had been blown away by the strong wind. Despite the chaos in the living room, he quickly checked on his family, but unfortunately discovered that the windows and doors of the room where his mother and son were sleeping were also gone, leaving only a bed frame. His mother's son and mattress were all missing. Fortunately, her husband, Mr. Wan, was not in the same room at the time and survived. Another resident of the community revealed that he woke up from his sleep and found the whole house shaking. The windows of his house were blown into pieces and the living room was too dangerous to stand in. Surveillance footage from another resident showed that the floor-to-ceiling windows in the living room of the house were almost completely blown off, leaving only a curved and deformed section of the window frame. Many residents found only the balcony railing left in their living rooms, and even two or three windows were blown directly into the living room, with broken glass all over the floor. One person lamented that fortunately, no one was there that day, otherwise there might have been casualties. Repair shop staff also revealed that they saw a household in the neighborhood dismantling the exteriors of an air conditioner. They said, Many of them not only had broken glass or blown away glass doors, but also the stainless steel frames embedded in the walls were blown away. The shops outside the neighborhood were also affected, although not as much as the residents of the high-rise buildings. The signs and iron frames of several shops fell down, and the glass doors were all broken. Others also shared on social media that the violent rainstorm in Nanchang not only led to water and power outages in many places, but even exteriors of air conditioners' apartments drift and fell. Many vehicles were also damaged by fallen trees, and streetlights were swaying in the wind and rain. Regarding the casualties caused by the strong wind in Nanchang, there are doubts that it was not solely due to the wind, but rather because the residential buildings are tofu dread construction. Some people criticized, was this wind as strong as the typhoons experienced by coastal cities? Why didn't they have windows being blown out there? This is just shoddy construction. Other residents also commented, Floor-to-ceiling windows with full glass are heavy, and the aluminum alloy materials used are much stronger than ordinary windows. It's impossible for them to be blown away. The ones that blow away are cheap and poor quality windows. Public records show that the Weimeng Clearwater Bay neighborhood was completed in 2015 and has repeatedly received quality complaints in recent years. Its developer, Weimeng Group, has also been involved in major corruption scandals. Digging further, it was found that 20 years ago, this area was originally a remote area in Clearwater Bay, but due to its proximity to Chanang Avenue in the north and surrounding Wetland Park, it later became a battleground for many developers. Among them, Weimeng Group, that holds more than 200 acres of land, developed this current super-large neighborhood area. The Weimeng Group started from a feed company in 1995 and later ventured into real estate and mining, becoming a well-known local enterprise. Weimeng Group founder Li Mengping was sentenced to one year and six months in prison for bribery, and then sentenced to 10 years and two months in prison and fined 1 million yuan in June 2023. Li was one of the main bribe givers in the case of Hu Changqing, the former vice governor of Shanxi province, who was the first vice provincial level official sentenced to death since the reforms in 1978. He was executed in 2000 for bribery. Clearwater Bay was acquired through bribery of land, construction approval, and sales. Weimeng Group also cut corners in construction, leading to poor quality and ultimately this tragedy. Furthermore, the extreme and adverse weather that has persisted for several days in Jiangxi province has also caused significant losses in many cities throughout the nation. The China Meteorological Administration stated that on March 31st, 
Nanchang recorded 2,783 lightning strikes, with 58 meteorological observation stations seeing wind speeds of level 8 or above. 13 meteorological observation stations broke historical wind records, with the highest wind speed reaching level 12 at the Tangnan Red Star Station in Nanchang County. The thunderstorm winds were rare and led to heavy damages. From 8.30 to 10.30 p.m. on April 2nd, the Jiangxi Provincial Meteorological Observatory issued orange thunderstorm, heavy rain, hail, and strong wind warnings. On April 2nd, a building in Nanchang collapsed in the afternoon, injuring 11 people. I called the property management to come and take a look. I don't know what to do. The wind outside has been very strong, and I feel like the windows of our house are about to be blown down. Now the ground is flooded. On April 3rd, Nanchang County's Shantang Railway Station also suffered from a wind disaster. In the footage, it can be seen that the lobby's glass and ceilings were blown off, leaving a floor covered in shattered glass. The glass of a school cafeteria was also shattered. In Gangzhou, Jiangxi, many storefront doors and windows along the street were blown up, leaving a huge mess. Employees of this restaurant are struggling to block the door with chairs. They are hit by hail blowing in through the cracks in the door. One employee expressed relief that fortunately the glass of the door is of good quality, otherwise it would have been smashed down long ago. After the strong wind, a man found that the windows of his balcony were gone. Whoa, the food street looks like this. It's all blown to pieces. Hopefully no one is hurt. Oh my god, it's a mess. Everything is smashed. Sofas, refrigerators, they are blown all the way to here. As you can see, rows of roofs were lifted up and some houses directly collapsed, causing severe losses for residents. Surprisingly, even shipping containers were blown away by hundreds of meters. A witness recounted the events. Yesterday, I was there filming. When I was filming the fourth video, a container was blown off. After 20 seconds, I ran out and was almost killed by hail. I saw the container fly directly into the pond over there. I was blown into the other side of the pond. Look at this large container. I saw it flying over yesterday. I was blown into this pond that is over 20 meters deep. The extreme weather also stranded a large number of passengers at Nanchang Railway Station. Heavy rain in Luping City, Jiangxi, caused the water level of rivers to rise sharply. On the morning of April 3rd, a four-person car returning home to worship their ancestors passed through Fanjia Village in Zongbu Town and was washed into the river while trying to pass through a flooded section. Three people drowned and one town official involved in the rescue went missing. According to China News, heavy and torrential rain began in Luping City on the evening of April 1st, with an average rainfall of 69 millimeters, flooding village roads, farmland, and residential areas. Chinese media Star Video reported that around 1,100 trees fell on both sides of the urban roads and green belts in Honghu District, Nanchang City. Another 500 newly planted trees in the Ganjiang Citizens Park were uprooted. According to CCTV News, on April 3rd, the wind and hail disaster that started on March 31st affected 93,000 people in nine prefecture-level cities and 54 counties in Jiangxi province. Seven people died in the disaster, 552 people were urgently evacuated, and 263 people were urgently relocated. The disaster affected an area of 5,700 hectares of crops, with 12 households and 44 houses collapsing, 
80 households and 192 houses severely damaged and overall damaged up to 4,107 houses. The direct economic loss amounted to 150 million yuan. The extent of the disaster is still being further assessed and verified. Extreme weather in southern China has also been frequent in recent days, with provinces such as Hunan, Fujian, Guangdong, and Guizhou experiencing heavy rain, hail, and strong winds. Some areas even saw hailstorms and thunderstorms with strong winds reaching force 8 to 10. Wind gusts exceeded level 12, with hailstones reaching diameters of over 20 millimeters. In Hunan's province's Yueyang city on April 1st, sudden heavy rain made streets turn into rivers, with many cars submerged and numerous bicycles and motorcycles washed away. Poor quality construction projects have also caused great distress to the public, with rain leaking in and strong winds damaging many houses. On March 30th, Fuzhou city also experienced heavy rain and strong winds. Street food stalls were blown apart, leaving vendors helpless. The streets were full of items blown away. In Huizhou, Guangdong, the sky was all dark and strong winds with heavy rain swept in, looking like doomsday. Just a few days ago, on March 25th, Zhejiang experienced severe rain and heavy hail in cities such as Hangzhou, Jinhua, Kuzhou, and Yiwu. Many vehicles had their roofs or windows smashed by hailstones the size of chicken eggs, and insurance companies exploded with calls. According to the Beijing News, on the afternoon of March 25th, many areas were affected by thunderstorms, strong winds, and hail. Yiwu in Zhejiang was affected by a strong convective cloud system, experiencing sudden thunderstorm gusts and hail. The hail caused a number of head injuries. Many cars were hit by hailstones, with one vehicle carrying a woman and two children, sustaining multiple holes in its roof. Rainwater poured in, and the woman tearfully exclaimed, Our car is ruined. In Jinhua Yiwu, the door of a supermarket was damaged by strong winds. According to the store owner, there were no casualties, but the loss of doors, windows, and goods amounted to nearly 30,000 yuan. A resident of Yiwu described hailstones as large as chicken eggs, which shattered many car windows. One citizen remarked, I've been in Zhejiang for three years and I have never experienced hail. The hail in Yiwu, Zhejiang is seriously terrifying. Mr. Huang, a resident of Yiwu, said that around 4 p.m. he was driving when hail suddenly began to fall. He stopped his car by the roadside and watched as large hailstones cracked the windshield. He said, although it only lasted for a few minutes, the density was very high. After the hail stopped, I saw cars ahead with their rear windshields shattered. Many people in my WeChat friend circle also posted photos of their cars being smashed. Some people, presumably from Yiwu, also shared on social media their vegetable greenhouses being smashed by hail and subsequently transformed into starry sky roofs. They humorously invite everyone to come to their homes to see the stars. Another person remarked, After the hail in Yiwu, Zhejiang, none of the cars outside were spared, windshields were shattered, and the bodies of the cars were left with pits and dents. As of 9.50 p.m. that evening, Yiwu's PICC Property and Casualty Insurance Company received 9,022 claims for vehicle damage due to hail disasters, with 12 claims for commercial insurance and 100 claims for household property insurance. The vehicle damage mainly were shattered windows, sunroofs, and even the body of the car. It is estimated that the insurance industry's payout for the Yiwu hail disaster will exceed 100 million yuan. Shangju, Taizhou, also experienced hailstorms, with strong winds blowing down walls along South City Road, striking some vehicles as well. In Zhengbu town, in Qingtian, Li Shui, the guardrail on a bridge was blown down during the violent rainstorm. According to Thai News, the hailstorm in Kaihua, Zhejiang, stunned local residents. Staff of the Zhejiang Meteorological Service Center said that the severe weather in Kuzhou and Hangzhou was most evident, with radar echoes turning red to purple. Regarding such extreme weather in Zhejiang, many people on X commented, Even heaven can't bear it anymore. 
This is a sign of divine anger and popular discontent, a sign of the collapse of the CCP. On March 23rd, Hunan's Yi Yang also experienced tornadoes and hail. This is just after Xi Jinping's March 19th visit to Hunan, so some people remarked, this is not a good sign. Apart from heavy rain and strong winds, extreme high temperatures occurred in Hainan and Guangxi on the afternoon of April 2nd. According to the China Meteorological Administration, Lingao and Hainan recorded the county's historical 40 degrees plus temperature. In Guangxi, Baise and Tianyang City reached temperatures as high as 39.7 degrees Celsius and 39.2 degrees Celsius, respectively. The high temperatures in northwest Hainan are expected to last for five to six days. While the southern regions were hit by heavy rain and storms, northern China, such as Inner Mongolia, Beijing, and Hebei, experienced severe sandstorms. Around noon on March 27, Sonid Right Banner in Inner Mongolia saw strong winds and severe sandstorms. By 11.40 a.m., the maximum wind speed reached 28.4 meters per second, force 10, with a minimum visibility of 88 meters. The local meteorological administration issued the highest level red sandstorm warning, leading to work stoppages, school closures, production halts, and transportation suspensions. Throughout March 27, most areas of Hubei province, such as Zhangjiakuo and Chengdu, experienced sandstorms. On March 28, Beijing saw strong winds and sandstorms, with a real-time air quality index reaching 500 and a PM of 10, indicating severe pollution. The Beijing Municipal Education Commission announced a suspension of outdoor gatherings and outdoor sports activities. Since the beginning of this year, China has been hit by a series of natural disasters and man-made calamities. There are wildfires, hailstorms, and windstorms, as well as sluggish Chinese economy with foreign capital withdrawing and factories and physical stores closing down. Unemployment and wage cuts have plagued many citizens, causing widespread frustration. However, under the high pressure control of the CCP, people who are suffering have nowhere to appeal and can only express their dissatisfaction through various peaceful means. April 4th is Qingming Festival in China, a traditional festival for honoring deceased relatives. Recently, nearly 3 million people went to Red Star Road near Luyang District, Hefei, to lay flowers at the former residence of Li Keqiang, the former premier who suddenly passed away last October. The local police were on high alert. On April 4th, Chinese commentator Tsai Shun Kun expressed on an overseas social media platform that the scene of nearly 3 million people laying flowers near Red Star Road was extraordinary. During this time, there was not a single piece of litter on the ground. He said, Taxi drivers in Hefei offer free rides to Red Star Road. All flower shop owners provide white roses and chrysanthemums at cost. And supermarket owners move boxes of mineral water to the roadside for people to take. Several young friends of mine in Hefei volunteered to guide people at the subway station after work. The people of Hefei offer the highest respect and the utmost sincerity to this fellow townsman, which is a rare public memorial in Chinese history. Tsai commented, Li Keqiang, as a symbol of the Communist Youth League, was already enveloped in a sense of tragedy. He was extremely incompetent as a decade-long premier, achieving nothing politically and suffering economic setbacks. However, even after his death, there was a wave of commemoration in the community. This premier, who seemed like a neighbor or brother, died suddenly right after stepping down from his post. In this suffocating political environment, everyone feels powerless, not knowing when they will face similar circumstances. Tears are not cheap. People commemorating Li Keqiang are commemorating a lost era and expressing dissatisfaction with the current political reality.